In order to accurately assess for OCD, clinicians administer what's known as the Y-Box, or the yale Brown Obsessive Compulsive Disorder Scale. And what it goes through, it goes through the different types of obsessions and compulsions people experience to better understand what are the different thoughts of worry they're experiencing and what are the behaviors they're engaging in in order to prevent the thought of worry from happening or to reduce their level of anxiety. In our last video, we talked a little bit about germ contamination and how that's a common uh, feature in OCD, but it's not the only one. And actually, there are a bunch of different subtypes of OCD, and most people experience more than just one subtype throughout the course of OCD. And one way to think about OCD is it's episodic and it can flare and it can come and go. And so OCD is a lifelong illness. It doesn't have a cure, but there are treatments and we'll talk about those later. And so one way to think about OCD is somebody can have a certain symptom like fear of germ contamination or for fear of getting ill and they can do really great work and, and boss that fear back and get better. And then they have a period of time where they're feeling great. Um, they're not experiencing any obsessions or compulsions, but all of a sudden a new thought of worry pops in and then they have a new set of compulsions they need to perform. And so the best way to kind of explain this is to break it down into different categories. And so again, if you remember, obsessions are intrusive thoughts, images, urges, or impulses that pop into one's mind. And the most common obsessions experienced are aggressive obsessions, contamination obsessions, sexual obsessions, and then there's a variety of other types of obsessions, such as religious obsessions, worries about morality or being a good or bad person, um, and hoarding and saving obsessions also fall into these uh, categories as well. And so when we think of aggressive obsessions, it's important to understand that intrusive thoughts are unwanted. They're thoughts that pop into one's mind that cause a great deal of distress because they don't want to act on the thought. Um, but it's very common for young children and adults to experience intrusive thoughts of harming themselves or others. And what I mean by that is they might get a graphic image that pops into their mind of them stabbing themselves or slitting their wrist or uh, hanging themselves. And they start to worry, like, what if I want to do this? And they know they don't, right? And so this is why it causes a great deal of anxiety. Um, but what happens is, again, the mind gets really savvy. And it says, well, in order to ensure that you're not going to hurt yourself, you need to do something. And so what somebody with this type of OCD might do is they might engage in touching or tapping compulsions. So OCD might say, well, in order to ensure that you don't harm yourself, you need to tap um, this table three times, or you need to rub your hand along the kitchen countertops every night before you go to bed, or you need to seek reassurance from a parent. Like, are you sure I'm not going to harm myself? Are you sure I'm not going to kill myself? You're sure, right? And they need to do this over and over again until their parent provides them with that reassurance in order to make them realize that they're not going to. The problem is, again, it doesn't really work because it just fuels that need to get more and more reassurance or to do more compulsions over time. And so what falls into the category of aggressive obsessions are sexual obsessions as well. And so Aggressive obsessions can be fear of harming self. It can be fear of harming others. So sometimes people will be cooking in the kitchen and they're using a knife to chop onions and they have a thought of uh, stabbing their mother or stabbing uh, a family member or a friend. And so they might avoid being around that person or they might avoid handling sharp objects altogether. And so again, the more you avoid these things, the more you have to avoid them and then you're no longer able to do the things you want to do. Okay. Um, contamination obsessions, we've kind of already gone over, but they fall in different categories. It can be a fear of contaminants related to urine or feces. It can be chemical contaminants, like worries about what if I use this cleaning product and it, some of it gets on me and then I eat something and then I poison myself and I die. And so notice all of these have this fear component, right? It's this worry about a negative outcome happening and needing to prevent it from happening. 
And so the other major category I would say that often gets overlooked is this concept called just right OCD. Um, and it's this feeling of incompleteness or feeling to need to do things until you feel the right way. And so these can span from needing to repeat routine activities like walking in and out of doorways, um, when writing or completing homework assignments, needing to go back and retype what you're typing or rewrite what you're writing. And so one thing to keep in mind is that obsessions and compulsions can look very similar across people, but the function of them differs depending on what the person's worried is going to happen. And so I could see someone washing their hands and I'm going to make the assumption they're worried about getting sick. But some people wash their hands and they have to wash them three times in a row while counting in their mind in order to prevent their mother from getting into a car accident, for example. And so anything can be an obsession and anything can be a compulsion, right? It's just the function of the behavior. And so whenever you're behaving in a certain way, if the goal of that behavior is to prevent a feared outcome or to reduce your level of distress, then that falls in the category of OCD.